Global Gathering 2009, we are backstage in the very press bit and uh, I'm very privileged we're sat here with uh, one of the main headliners, Orbital. Guys, welcome. Thank Hello. You. Thank you. Um, one question I wanted to ask you, when I saw the lineup for Global Gathering and Orbital, one of the headline acts, um, your, your career spans like two decades, it's amazing, and you're headlining uh, two decades later. How do you maintain that you know, in, in your career? What, what's the secret? I don't know. I don't know. That's the secret. I don't, we just get on with it. Um, I really don't know. It, it astounds me, but I, I enjoy it. Keep but, that fingers crossed. Yeah, you, now that's it. <laughs> Keeping his fingers crossed for 20 years. I don't know. Who knows? You know, you just, you just plug away at it 20 years ago. You know, as a young man, you just keep doing it and you keep doing it. All of a sudden, 20 years later, here we are. And it's like, bloody hell. Look at that. Yeah, it's, it's amazing because when we go out there tonight, there's going to be people that aren't even 20 out there. Do you know what I mean? And I love that. I, we're we're going to be playing to a bunch of people, not all of them, but there'll be a bunch of people out there like, OK, well, let's see what this is all about then. And hopefully we'll win a few people over, you know. That was going to be one of the questions because there's going to be, there are going to be kids out there who maybe not have heard of you, but their parents, their older brothers or sisters have going to play, you know, they're going to uh, have played, you know, some of your old school stuff and they're going to immediately hear it and connect with it. That must be something really special in your career. That's it, lovely. It's, it's mad, isn't really it? nice. No, it's lovely. It's lovely. I sort of, I sort of hoped that would happen one day, but I didn't think I'd got there yet. And it's only sort of when we came out this year, it's like, oh yeah, we have, we've reached that point, you know, where people's parents, that people might have heard us in their parents' record collection. It's bloody mad, you know. And one of the questions from one of the guys that works uh, backstage at the uh, the Student Pocket Guide, um, your one of your tracks, Belfast. Why was it called Belfast? It's called Belfast because we because of David Holmes. Holmes. David Holmes is full, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, we went he, he, uh, very early on. It was one of one of our first ever gigs. We went over to Belfast because um, David Holmes just rung us up. I mean, this was in the time before there were sort of rave music agents or anything and he just got our number somehow rung us up and said come on come over i'll pay for you come on you know we do this um night at the art college we went over there had a, a, the most fantastic night it was the first time we'd ever been treated like sort of rock stars or something with people screaming and pouring for us it was it was mad and this david holmes stood there looking at us just bursting out laughing just laughing at us and sort of i guess he guessed it might have happened and when we left, he said, oh, you got any, got any music? You know, you can leave me, any stuff you haven't released? And I gave him the tape because I did have something. And he rung me up two weeks later and said, oh, that second track, I love that one. We all love that, which was Belfast. It was a demo for Belfast. And we thought, well, that's, 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 yeah, let's yeah, name yeah. it after Belfast because we had such a good time. And there were such negative sort of connotations with the word Belfast at the time. Well, wouldn't it be nice to yeah. do a track, do a record? It, it's not. Yeah. It's just a, a, a beautiful track, about, you know, about beautiful people and a lovely time, you know. Now, sometimes comes in a question about um, a DJ shelf life, but your career says it all. Um, what's next on the horizon for Orbital? I don't know. We're going to finish well, this rest of the g yeah, gigs we've got this summer. Really enjoying the summer, basically. You know. just want to, you know, enjoy the moment. Really. We've been, you know, we've we've been. We were talking the other week, saying, oh. You know, what do you reckon? You reckon they, I reckon we could do with a few new bits for next year, you know, that kind of thing. Already you're starting to think ahead, but we, we did say we weren't going to do that, you know. We should slap myself on the wrist for even thinking ahead. We just said, let's just enjoy these gigs, see where we are at the end of the summer. If you, can, if you look at the gigs you've played, along with the gigs that some of the other jocks in the lineup have played, they're all very talented DJs, but you've got, must have some stories to tell of gigs played. In your career, what is that one gig that stands out that you've walked away and thought, Oh man, what an amazing night! Or is there more than one? Or what's the one big one? Probably, probably a few. I mean, Glastonbury—the first time I ever played Glastonbury. It's the scariest and the most exciting thing that you ever do. You know, it's like I, I remember standing there at the edge of the stage, watching people, watching M people go on, looking white as shit. It's like, it's like watching people go to the gallows. They look so sort of pale and scared. They walked up on stage, and we were setting our gear, and I saw them come off stage, and they're like people go like ah so excited and, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. thrilled it's like what well, shit what's this going to be like i remember seeing bjork before i was tuning my sense and uh, you know i could hear the beginning of human behavior and i looked over and there's this like little woman stood there going, <laughs> looking really nervous I thought, oh shit that's bjork if she's nervous what am i going to be like you know it's sort of it, it's absolutely terrifying at yeah. first but but the most exciting thing that you've ever done especially yeah. when you've never done it's such a rush it isn't it when you've so never well played well. the audience are brilliant and they just you know were well up for that type of thing just then you know what i mean yeah playing like a bunch yeah. of dance music or electronic music you know a lot of acid house basically a sort of indie rock stroke dance crowd at the time in you know in 94 it was it was it was just ripe for it it was brilliant
In terms of um, obviously kind of music scenes changing, electro's big, do you change your style to kind of obviously what you were playing maybe 15 years ago, do you change your style slightly to adapt to what's big now or? Uh... You know like, like if you go around Global Gavin you've got flavours of everything and that's all going on now, do you know what I mean? So you, you know if you get into a groove like you know like uh, dubstep fumes and like you know you know, there's really interesting things in that production-wise and stuff, you know, and that just goes in, you know, it's like, I suppose, like reading a book for a, and a writer, you know, things just get regurgitated and, you, do, you know, yeah, you, you get do get into, You, you do get, get influenced by, yeah. by what you're listening to. I mean, yeah. at the moment, there's a real, that real sort of 80s thing, there's a real sort of style of people using certain types of drum machines, like the Lin drum and the drum tracks and things like that, that rather than the sort of heavy analogue drum machines like the 909 and the 808 which I still love and we still use on stage but I'm enjoying that I'm enjoying adding a bit of you know that kind of uh, yeah the, the drum machines that we sort of you know like our first drum machine was 707 that kind of sound really clicky hard sort of drum machine and um, they're, they're very popular at the moment and you know it's, it's, it's sort of you think oh yeah I, I like that and so you, you incorporate it you just sort of go with the flow don't you, yeah, you yeah, uh, everything than... everything's everything's like a big soft flow you know and every DJ or producer, if they've remixed the big tune or made a big tune, they're known for like their signature tune. Without a doubt, for you guys, it's got to be Chime. When you drop that, is it a case if you think, oh, God, here we go again, or you drop it and the buzz you get from the crowd, you're like, come on, yes! What, what's the feeling? Oh, it's lovely. Every time, you know, when you get such a warm welcome for that tune as well, you know, because it was so, you know, like 20 years ago now. But it's like photographs, isn't it? Like looking at photographs, they're nostalgic, you know, like memories come from people, you know, around that time and, and what have you, you know, so it's, it's like, you know, it's... Um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's like a... It's, it's great, I mean, it's, it's the tune that sort of started us off oldest, and, you know... child. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of, you know, we, we owe our career to that tune at that time. And, yeah. you know, it's one of my, that is one of my favourite bits in the set when we drop the, the kick drum in Chime. Because it is, it's one of those, it always, the, the kick drum in Chime was always one of those 80s kind of ones. And there it is, I just love it. I just wait for it. And it's like, right, here we go. Bang. And you just watch people smile. You know, it's, it's a great moment. Listen, guys, thanks for your time. First of all, just want to say, we're here with the Orbital Headliners, Global Gathering 2009. Guys, thank you. Have a wicked gig. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Thank you. Hello, we're Orbital. Get yourself onto the studentpocketguide.com if you haven't already. That is.